<laughs> okay, we're going to open up the Finance Committee meeting for Tuesday, February 13th at 7.05 p.m. I want to remind everybody we are being videotaped for future showings on both the town website and the cable system channel, the Douglas Cable Channel, I guess we're I should say. Now, we are on YouTube now as well. Yeah. YouTube, iTunes, find us when you, where you can. Uh, we are. First up is the Board of Health. Come on up, guys. And ladies. No, that's Heroes. No, I've been watching on iTunes for years. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm not sure I've met everybody, so when we go around the room and just introduce ourselves, I'll, I'll start and then we'll go left, I guess. Uh, I'm Ryan Hogan from the Finance Committee. Hi, I'm Cindy Sherrick. I'm Carol Gogolinski. David McCollum. Kristen Harris. Steve Donatelli. Matt Bolger. Jane Lovett. Pam Holmes. Eric Chamberlain. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. Um, before we start with the budget, would you mind giving just a couple minutes summary on what you guys are responsible for? I know you're responsible for a lot here in town. And yes. Just okay, the Board of Health, um, the objective of the Board of Health is to serve the public. Uh, the aspects which we kind of oversee are the transfer station. Uh, we oversee the, the maintenance and operation of the transfer station. Mm -hmm. um, we deal with uh, septic systems, permitting, um, inspecting and uh, serving up the installations of the septic systems in town. Um, wells, we got permits for wells. Um, things we do are the restaurant inspections, mm -hmm. inspect the restaurants. Uh, the town nurse falls under our, yes, thank you. Uh, animal, inspector. animal inspector also falls under the department. Okay, great. The overall health of the town of Douglas Peak. Basically. All right. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. No, no small feat in this no, uh, day and age with the flu wandering around. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, let's take a look at the budget. Um, if you can kind of go through, usually what we do is go through line by line. If there's something's pretty much the same in the past and in, in the projected future, as we know this year, we kind of went five years forward try to get a better idea of future costs. Um, is that why I can't see the numbers anymore? <laughs> that is. That is. Uh, okay. Thank you for pointing that out, though. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. Go, go ahead. Okay. Start with you're the, you're the monitor wells. Yeah. All right. Uh, the monitor wells. Uh, a total budget of $9,950. Um, that's for um, that's for testing the wells. Mm -hmm. um, the landfill maintenance. I'm sorry. Quick question on Questions, wells. Excuse my ignorance. Um, do you, do you have an employee who does that, or a company you mm -hmm. contract? Uh, firm. Engine firm. We contract that with. Okay. Yes, contract that. So that just started the first. This is a three-year contract. Okay. So we just started. So that's. That's encompassing an average or a three-year contract at that price. At that price. Per you don't year. Pay per year. Per individual test, you pay for the whole year, right. basically. Or however many tests you want to run. Well, they have a certain amount. They do. The state requires. Yeah. Okay. And how much is that? Nine thousand. Nine hundred and fifty per year. Nine hundred and fifty. Nine nine fifty. Yeah, nine thousand. Yes. So, uh, so say we have a. I think his question. Let me. If we have a big year, I don't know what an average year for well checking There's is. There's seven wells in the, that are up at the transfer station that's, that's located throughout the whole. Okay. Probably nine acres of, of yep. property. The capped uh, landfill, uh, right? And, uh, area. Uh, so all around the surrounding area. So those area. are the wells you're testing. We yeah, also, not regular right. well. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. We oh. also have uh, up at the top uh, for vents that we'll check for with the methane. Uh, we also have testing of the stream that twice a year where they'll test upstream and downstream to see if there's anything that's contaminating the, the water supply that's getting into the, the stream. Okay. And the, they really cover everything under the sun that you can imagine. Uh, 
and the price actually has come down. In the years past, we've been up to twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand oh, dollars wow. a year, and it's great to see some of the competition. We went out, and I think there was at least six, six will, will put in at for least. the bids, mm -hmm. and it, it, we, uh, we did well this for this, this three-year contract. <coughs> So this doesn't include testing any of our drinking wells, then? No. Okay. Oh, no. This is only the land fill. Oh, yeah, I guess maybe the water is about to probably taste <coughs> right. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Next, the landfill maintenance. Uh, we have a budget of $1,400. That's for two mowings per year to have the landfill, uh, cap landfill mode. All that is for. Okay. Do they have an individual budget for landfill? Like, how do we pay to get rid of the trash at the landfill? Oh no, this is. No, this is a. Uh, this, this is the is old landfill. This is the old dump. So, no. Oh, okay. Right. And the next we have the board of health. Um, first we have the compensation, which is the wages. Mm -hmm. Total wages of thirty-five thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars. Um, the first that's, was the that's twenty first for, for this year. That's this year. Next year. Next year we'll go up to uh, its budget for thirty-five thousand six forty-five for nineteen. And then it. Uh, I think they factor the one and a half percent right, cola. Yeah, right. Yes, and then one and a half percent cola board. increase yearly. Yes. So that's all for the uh, the wages. Then we have expenses. Uh, total expenses of seventy three hundred dollars for this year. Uh, item by item. I don't know if you want to go down item by item or total. Um, any questions on each item? Any items? Yeah, the total is good by me. Does anyone have any questions? Um, the professional and technical. What what is that? Uh, that's for. Um, that's a, te a lab fees for having the water tested in town for the beaches okay. and such. Okay. And yep. then also Steve Garabedian, who's our uh, restaurant inspector. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, that's good. So you have a professional that goes out and checks <laughs> yes. the restaurants. Yes. That's Anything good. That inspects. He sells food. That sells food. He oh, that's good. twice a year. Oh, that's good. That's a 57-100 in-state and that's cut off. That's in-state travel. 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 <laughs> So any reimbursements for the, yeah. the beach testing? Didn't know what the tea was. Oh no no that's fine. I was going to give you an additional explanation for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll Other questions on that? No. Okay. On the next page. Uh, um, Inspector. Oh. <coughs> Mine doesn't. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's Oh. Or second to last one. The middle one. Yes, okay, the last one. Okay. Okay. Cut off. So let's go ahead. Expenses. Yeah, yep, just go to animal inspector. Okay, next one, the animal inspector. Mm-hmm. Uh, total animal inspector. Uh, we have $3,863 dollars <coughs> this year. $911 for next year. Could you just briefly go over what the animal inspector what does, does and does not do, maybe? Uh, well, anytime it's, um, a complaint or a, a call comes up, maybe somebody's concerned about it, you know, maybe having rabies, or um, I don't know if they respond to any, they still respond to the dead animals in the road, or? No. They don't anymore for that. Um, I believe the former animal inspector just walked in. Corey, would you mind? Corey is the informer, yes. He could. Can you just give us a brief de yeah. de description of what the animal inspector does, Pam was asking? Yeah, of course. Um, animal inspector in general, um, responsibilities are rabies in town, um, taking care of all rabbit animals or potentially rabbit animals, setting them up for state testing, um, barn inspections, making sure the health of the animals in the town um, is up to par generally a uh, census of the animals in town as far as farm animals, livestock is concerned, chickens, um, horses, cows, goats, sheep, that type of thing. Plus the health of the animals. Plus right, the health of the animals, making sure they have water and 
um, and that they're well maintained. Adequately, uh, adequately housed. Yeah. Right, right, right. The right. right. husbandry is, is, is through the state, too. The state has, has been mandated the animal inspector that you basically deal a lot with the state when it comes to filling out all kinds of forms. And do yeah. they pay you as well? No. Oh. No. Just check. I wish they did. Unfunded <laughs> mandate. Always good to check. <laughs> for what the animal inspector is getting paid, it, it, they do an awful lot of work to check out. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, if the and state animals, keeps piling uh, uh, on. Animal, they go out and inspect. They do, they do a lot of driving around, a lot of calls. Uh, you know, the police station references them a lot for for rabies animals, for raccoons in people's yards. There's a lot of that type of stuff. If an animal, there's doubles. a lot of I think misconception about what the animal inspector does. I mean, I. I do see the people get confused about where ACO is and where the animal control yeah, officer. I see and an animal in my yard and I don't know what it is or what kind it is and then I see a dead animal and what if it has rabies and my dog gets at it. I mean it's... There is and there's a fine line you know? between where the yeah. animal inspector would take over and where you need to call a wildlife pack agent who that's their job is they come and you pay them to deal with stuff like that and there's a fine line between those two. Well, I was saying I, I'm not dealing with private animals. $3,200, right. so good on you for doing that. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. It has a pretty much 100% kill rate. Yeah, right. if, you, if, you if you don't catch it, you don't it does. Right. It does. It's almost 100% fatal. It is. It's very, very dangerous. They also yeah. have to be licensed to, to carry a firearm in case they have to put down an animal. There's, there's, there's uh, mm -hmm. an awful lot to it to it. Mm -hmm. And for the pay that the town is paying, like I said, it's since around three thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars. It's very minimal and minuscule for the amount of time. Thank you. Of course. All right. Next we have nursing. The total budgeted uh, the nurse is three thirteen thousand four hundred and eighty six dollars. Two thousand eighteen and then thirteen thousand uh, dollars. I don't, know what, I don't know what it is. That one went down. I know it went down. I'm not sure, but. What is the uh, schedule hmm. for the nurse? One day a week. One day a week, yes. She's in the office one day a week. Seven, mm -hmm. seven and a half hours a week. I think it's seven hours. It's either seven. I saw, I just seven. read where it was 7.5. Yeah. What day Maybe, maybe that's is true. That She's normally here Tuesdays. Tuesdays usually. It varies, but it's normally Tuesdays. Okay, so it does vary. You see. Anybody that wants to walk in, uh, she's open to give free blood pressure or do uh, help in any manner. She also goes down to Riddlebrook and, and works there uh, probably once a, a, a week also, or once a, twice a month or whatever uh, for blood pressure or anything else. And she also uh, is on call to go to homes if anybody needs to have it where they're homebound, she'll go in and help out. And that, plus she does flu clinics if necessary or any other types of clinics. Uh, she also is, which is great, when she does not work, she just had a little baby a year or two ago. And uh, if she did not come in in the full amount of time, she does not put it in for pay, which is good. In other words, she's like, I think this year she only it was around seven thousand and out of the thirteen thousand because she was uh, didn't didn't come in for that period. Yeah, for the newborn. Uh, which is good. I'm sorry. What what, are, what is Riddlebrook? Riddlebrook is a uh, is for it's a senior housing. For senior, senior housing. Senior okay. housing. It's right across from where used to be Wallace's and now it's GPI. Oh, okay. It's right before you get to where uh, Dr. Miller's office is. It's set down into that section there. Okay. So you, you budgeted for thirteen forty five, but if she comes every week, that's what and it'll be. We also budget where she, she for schooling or for <coughs> special seminars. We I think we schedule another almost another week, three to one, seven days, okay. where she, if she needs to go to uh, recertify or re do some training, that's in there to also cover. We pay for that recertification. Yes, we. Well, not the recertification as much as we just did her for seminars and for any, any schooling that basically she wants to go to. But we do not Me pay too. for the, the class. It's the yeah. most, but I think free that she goes to. Yes. Because any, uh, 
that? She was working three and a half hours a week okay. since she had the baby. Okay. Now she's going to be starting up her full time. That's why it, you're going to see. There's a big discrepancy. Yeah. Okay. So at that lower rate, though, is she meeting the town's needs, or the, could the town really use that seven and a half hours a week? Seven hours a week, definitely. Yeah, could use they it. definitely. Because there's so much more that, that with sure. emergency preparedness and all. That. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. yeah. She tracks a lot of diseases in town too. She's on the computer all the time for the state, and calling people that have certain ailments that she's got to keep track of. Okay. So she's pretty busy. Does she have a primary? Job or is this? This is it. This is her. Yeah. So if in the future the town wanted her more up, then she might be able to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't think they have that. Um, because they were in, Mr. Chair, I didn't know you wanted them to review the transfer station budget. Uh, sure. Well, they do. I'm going to make just some quick copies. Why don't you just do that? Thank you very much. The lags the point. <laughs> in my defense, I do think the copy I sent Suzanne was a little bit bigger, like all the way to the edge of the screen. Oh, I glasses out of the finance committee budget. <laughs> we'll see if we have any money left in the reserve fund. We got another issue tonight. Well, feel free. I don't have a problem at all. How much is the snow over by now? <laughs> What's that? How much is the snow over by? Uh, I don't know about the snow. I can't remember, man. The shark knows. Uh, snow is a that number changes over. almost daily. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it, I guess. At assume. the moment, we're at 241,000. Okay. It's been a tough winter. We had a lot of events. A lot of ice. It's the a lot of nature ice. of the events. They've yeah. had to go, and the price of the price of salted sand now is sky high. Really? Tis the season. 1,200 bucks for a truckload. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, we probably pay less because we get on a contract, but it's that's what it's running on the open market we're paying 47 a ton 47 a ton so Delivered. so that's still about nine nine hundred or so yeah, we did well the towns that came in later paying 60 a ton i bet they are while we're waiting do you want to talk about the transfer station a little bit how many days a week it's open i know there i believe it's Six month passes is that what you guys do? You, yeah, how so much those yeah. are, et cetera, et cetera. Sell so permits, uh, permits six months um, at a time. The transfer stations open three days a week: Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, we open at seven thirty till seven to four. Seven to four. The hours they're open. Okay. Two men, basically two men operate the transfer station. Yeah, we have two men up there at a time operating the. Station. Yeah, yeah. We have eight bins for recycling. We have uh, two 40 yarders, one for metal, one for larger material mm -hmm. like beds or couches or what have you. We also collect TVs and monitors and items of that sort. And every time that box goes out, it costs us $1,100. So that's why we charge a fee for getting rid of the TVs that's depending on the size. Uh, we try to help out the taxpayers by taking in batteries and you know, charge anything for that. If we can keep it down to a minimum, we really try to. And you know, with the way that the, mm. the guys have been working up there, uh, we've been able to uh, uh, pay for itself plus uh, accumulate a, a little bit of a, a cushion to uh, help us out if there is an emergency of, of, of some sort. Yeah. I think someone asked how, how I think if it was you, um, how, how do we pay for getting rid of the trash? We have BP, so, which is just signed. We signed a three-year contract with them. They've been with us now for probably 10 or 12 years. That's the other yeah. property line, right? Pardon me? Is that the other property line? The other property line? Well, on, on the yeah, yeah, on the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. budget. Right. You're is. talking probably, I think last year was $102,000 it cost us to have the material removed from the transfer station. They don't charge us for the recycling. Bins, they charge us so just for every time the uh, bin goes out, it's approximately between 120 to 140 dollars every load. <coughs> but we don't, we're not charged anything for like the cardboard. In fact, the cardboard is sent to Bellingham, the cardboard and uh, paper. And Blackstone. They, uh, Blackstone the Blackstone recycling. Yes, yeah, excuse mm -hmm. me. And they periodically, every six months, send us a check for 
how much uh, cardboard we had sent to them. And we're one of seven communities in the central Worcester County that joined in the initial beginning. And because of that, we pay or get, we get benefits more so than the other towns that came on board uh, after that fact. So uh, that was also, it's another positive that we have with them. And we also uh, have the, got the men up at the transfer station take the time and they cut off every cord. When something comes in, any appliance that comes in, they cut the cord and they put it in a, a barrel. Anybody that when they throw away some copper, good quality material, uh, they, they take that. Like tomorrow we have two small pickup truck loads going up to uh, the scrap yard and hopefully they'll come back with a check between $200 and $500. And they, that goes back into the, to our account and we just pay them for their mileage and the time that they we took. So that, that's a, also another nice plus. Mm -hmm. Do you know where, 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 where is BP taking uh, our trash? Incinerator or who knows? Uh, most of it is, uh, like I said, a lot of it is going to Blackstone. And the rest, I think it's going, I think it is going to Milby. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think it is. I forget the tonnage did go up this year. We did have to change a little bit because by law, because we're a, a municipality, we had to pay the truck drivers a different fee. Oh, yeah. So they did up it to that so mm -hmm. that we were covered by that. Uh, Prevailing little, wage. Yeah, it yep. was the Boston wage that we had to pay, which is. Out here, they didn't even that nice? interested in, in, in putting in part Get of Get you every way they can. Yeah. Hand over. I guess I had a quick policy question now. You, you have to have the pass in order to put um, yes. to bring yes. garbage there, right? Is that just a, just a policy decision no. made? The or? people who are utilizing it are paying, are paying for all the expenses. The town doesn't pay a, a dime. What they do do, though, is make it where if we don't make the money, the town would would cover it. No, I mean more of the fact of I'm cleaning out a storage unit and I need to throw away some stuff, but I have trash pickup at my house. I can't just go to the transfer station and, right. and say, hey, you know, charge me whatever right. to no, throw no, away. It's cheap to enough. It's, it's for a person right. 65 and over, it, it's $100 a year. Uh, and then if it's not, uh, it's $120. Two hundred a year. Two hundred a year. Two hundred a year. You can't beat it. And with so that, for you six months, if you got a hundred, paid a hundred bucks, you could just use the transportation. And we do it every right. six, six months. months, so that if, in case we do run into a, a fix with the cost factors just went bananas, we can then change our price. That's why we tr we try to uh, keep it where it's two times a year. Kristen would like to do it once. I don't blame her because she'd only have to sell tickets. Because <laughs> once he yeah. inspections. That's 1300 approximately that we sell. Yes. 2600 2600 a year. Yeah. Stickers. So. Um, it's close to, well, last year was 228000 We You just have to, um, we use the retained earnings to supplement the difference. Um, that's because of, we'll go through it a little bit later, but uh, they made a decision, the Board of Health made a decision a couple of years ago that the retained earnings was getting high enough where they wanted to kind of supplement with that, lower the ticket price until that got to a different level. So they anticipate about 226000 for FY19, and then the, the remainder of that will be taken as a transfer from retained earnings. Okay. All right, let's walk through the, the walk budget through lines budget. real quick. Okay, the transfer station salaries. Uh, total salaries of $63,917. Um, For the 1.5 COLA increase. Uh, yes, that included the 1.5 COLA increase that we had. Um, Where's that? At the top, okay. We'll go through the ex uh, expenses. Please. Um, I think the biggest expense is BP trucking at two hundred thousand. Right. Um, mm. Please, mm. Jim, uh, please jump in. <laughs> uh, so electric is is twenty six hundred. Water is estimated at two hundred twenty. Um, BP trucking is like I said, that's the biggest expense at two hundred thousand. The the box that he was alluding to, where everything gets 
brought into it. Uh, that's a little further down at other services at 7,000. Um, and then the cost of the stickers is 5,500. Other supplies at 1,300. The other ones are just smaller items. For a total expense of $220,340. There is a budget in there for 4,500 for capital. Um, there was some talk of if you had to replace a snowblower or um, a lawnmower. So there is some yes. piece in that if they had to replace it. But we just had to repair the uh, lights up there. We just had to do that this past a week so didn't have any lights we need to replace, repair those so that, I think that would be part of that and that cost. was on a $1,500 bill oh, about $1,500 we haven't billed yet but we got quoted approximately that $1,500 for that but we had quotes that were as expensive as 40, 4200 so it's, it's very good that we do go up for bid and we do try to get the lowest bid and get the same quality work workmanship done Have you cross uh, state lines with trash so uh, then can you dump a Johnston or do you have well, to dump wherever BP takes it I, I, I guess we can, we can find out there are armed guards at the central <laughs> <laughs> of out of state waste now do they use an up our do we have do we compete <laughs> like for BP versus waste management or we want as many uh, okay. quotes as we possibly can we only had two that did for the quote, and the other one was what was it, Liberty or Republic? Re uh, Republic, no, yeah. or maybe it was Republic. Uh, and others. BP really a lot quite quick, considerably cheaper than the other yes. two in their bid. And is the current contract three years? Is that what you're three. Saying? Three. three years, okay. So this is an enterprise fund, obviously, which the so town's not putting in any money. So is it easy just to say that if they bring, the, their expenses are less than the revenue from the, the six-month passes, that that would just go into retained earnings? Everything closes the retained earnings. So okay. if you don't spend what you um, anticipate spending, that would flow into the same as free cash mm -hmm. would be on our side. Yep. Um, any and it does it work the opposite if expenses were more than revenues that would come out of retained earnings? It, it doesn't. It would reduce retained earnings, reduce. but the town, we, we have to, we can only budget the amount equivalent to what last year's revenue is. Um, so we have to put in the revenue estimate at 226. The difference between the 226,000 and the budget amount has to be a transfer from retained earnings. Okay. But their retained earnings were certified this year. And Two hundred seventy-eight thousand five hundred twenty-seven dollars. Great. Sounds like you're doing a good job of running it. Trying. <laughs> People up at the transfer station really do a good. They job. are good yeah. workers. Yeah, I bring my stuff there. They're those very good. Compactors, compact is those forty yarders. I think are forty or maybe fifty yarders. We they can haul up up to twelve ton yeah. uh, per per unit. You've got to be very careful to try to get as much of that as you can because that does, every time you pull that out, you're going to be talking 100. And then right. you're talking, of course, by tonnage. You're, you're paying, I think it's 70 some dollars yep. uh, per ton plus the haul, hauling fee. So, Matt, I assume that Kevin has said so. If you have trash service, I assume you pay for it as a town, right? As opposed to being able to settle the funds this way and, and even it out. Uh, if we if the town wanted to do like a trash service, it would go out to bid and it would cost the town way more money, right? Outrageously more. Yeah. Okay. So the, my former employer, one of my last acts was to put out the RFP. Mm -hmm. Roughly 11,000 pickup spots. Um, the bids were right around $800,000. Okay. And we were dumping in our own landfill. <laughs> so it's substantially okay. more than that to all. We also have in the contract where we have a, I think it's a 10 yarder or a seven or eight yarder out here. Oh, okay. That's free. They come and pick that up and whatever this building here uh, puts into it, that doesn't cost the town to get part of the contract. <laughs> <laughs> we, but we have it near the police station to keep an eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Okay. Um, anyone else have anything else for the Board of Health? 
Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sometimes he sends an email. Okay. Um, next up is the building department. Come on up, Larry. ETA 735 for Howard Pam. Just so you. <laughs> I'll be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Howard's arrival, ETA 735. Seven, seven, email. 735? 735. Okay, you have two minutes. Um, does everyone know Larry, or do we want to go around and introduce ourselves again? Sure, why don't we do that? I'm Ryan Hogan. I'm Cindy Sherrick. Carol Gogolinski. Right. Larry Lynch. <laughs> Wake up. Hi, Larry. Larry. <laughs> Theme of it. Pam Holmes. Eric Chamberlain. All right. Um, want to spend a minute or two just telling us your duties for the town? Expecting, I assume, is pretty straightforward, but just homes, um, anything else? Well, um, plan review is a big part, zoning, enforcement. Okay. Um, I also write up the decisions for the plan, a uh, zoning board of appeals. Okay. Great. And your part time? Part time, 16 hours. Okay. Great. Um, so he, Larry pr produced a memo for us as well as the budget. I don't know what is the committee's preference. Do you want to walk through the memo? Just walk through the budget and pick up the memo as it go through. Does anyone have a preference? So, all right, let's walk through the memo first, Larry, if you would, and then we can review the budget quickly. If we have any questions, we'll. Um, okay. Um, so I was hired. July of 16 at 19 hours a week at uh, that step. Um, I voluntarily reduced my hours to 16 hours a week um, at the same rate. Okay. Um, I just felt that 19 was over and above and I didn't get the um, Jane also is part-time at some less than full-time hours, well, I forget. She's, as you know, the town halls run on a 30-hour week basis for most of the clerical staff. Um, what happened is they increased Jean, so she joined the Friday crew, so she was but increased her hours to 33 and a half hours. And that was kind of important for me because otherwise I don't really interact with Jean except by the phone and okay. by emails. So, I'm sorry, just so I have this straight, so we took Larry's three hours and gave them to Jane? Is that what we did essentially, or? It, it wasn't budget to budget. We just increased budget. her hours so okay. that she would have the overlap of Larry when Larry came in on Fridays. Okay, and is Jane a full-time just for the building department, or does she have? She is full-time for the building department, but okay. full-time for most clerical staff here is 30, 30 hours. hours. That's Monday through Thursday with a nine-hour day on Tuesday. Right. And then there are some of the employees that work on Friday, most of the management staff here, as well as Suzanne, um, Maria, and Jane. Okay. And but she was full time anyway, so there are no additional benefits to her other than the hourly pay Correct. for her three hours. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so that being cleared up, um, I haven't gotten a step raise since being hired, so I'd like. Appreciation. 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 Pat on the back. Add a boy. Well, those are free. Add a boy. Something like a little bit better than that. Um, so I'll let you. Um, that was what I recommended for myself. Um, I also recommended uh, Jane to get a step because she's been at um, that for the last three years. Her, her top step. Um, and if you see the volume of work in that office, 
Um, I think Jane does twice the amount of work that others in that office do. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that. No. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> what? May I remind you, remind you, we are being recorded for future shows. Why does it uh, drop from 42 to 37? Uh, 2019 to 2020, the full time wages. Um, You're way ahead of all the, all the rest of us, you know. Yeah, we're still on that? the first page. You haven't read the first page. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're not doing conversation. We are. We haven't gotten to the, to, to, to the sheet yet. We're talking about talking. When, um, Talk about the reason behind the yeah. raison d'etre. Yeah, I think so. What was the question? They went from, they, it looked like a step to go to 42, and then it looked like it dropped down to 35, 37. I could explain that. Okay. See, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> is it appropriate to explain? It sure is. Oh, okay. Um, Jane is considering retiring next fiscal year and because that position you know as many are in the in town hall they're one person positions and you don't always come in with a building department experience so there we do allow for some overlap when we you know provide for training so there would be an overlap if, if she chose to retire so it would be a number of weeks um, for that we would hire I assume at the two step no. ten the lower rate correct Depends yeah, on who you hire. Any, any classification like, okay. positions go through the management. Administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but with the step and grade change, I, I don't know. I don't know how the position has evolved since Larry came on board versus when the former building commissioner was there. So that would be, you know, it, as with, I don't want to speak for Matt, but any new, any new natural break in a position, you tend to review the position yep. and see what's yeah. appropriate. Right. So a general question on, I was always of the opinion you were in a position, you got to step 10 and then you were. You max out. You max out at step yeah. 10. Is it, is it common that we then give somebody a higher level and then start the steps over? Typically no. Typically, Typically no. you're right. When, when they max out, they max out unless their job has changed. Responsibilities, right. So that's, you know, Larry probably took a look at what her job okay. description was versus what he thinks it was being. I, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that's what happened. Yeah, and that may be, Jane may be well worth it, and I'm not really concerned with that. I'm just wondering how, this isn't a common practice where we're, because I was always, no. it's always been uh, presented to the public that you get to step 10, and that's, you're, you're maxed out at that point. Whenever, whenever that issue comes up, that's always stated. Is most of the staff is at step ten anyway, so this will not have the impact. That, that is true. Okay. It, unless the position has changed. changed. Okay. Um, and in this particular case, we had a full-time, you know, building yeah. commissioner. He may have shifted some of that responsibility over to her, which right. meant her job description may have changed to. Yeah. No, I understand. Have present a different job description to the town administrator but right. there are there are still some of us that I'm, I'm still not maxed out um, I'm still within the compensation chart no I, under, I understand so, because we had a couple step freezes over the last 12 years that I've been here right um, but you're right there are there are a number of that have been at step 10 for a little bit does municipal work uh, like federal where you natural you have a grade progression and then you start your step progression so like in my job you know it Five seven nine is the grade, five seven nine eleven, and then once you get to eleven, then you start your step progression of one through ten. No. Okay. The oh, grade is oh. based on uh, a lot of factors. Responsibility. Um, you know, confidentiality. Right. There's, there's a, a bunch of factors right. that, that go within the you, grade. You got a certain grades, and then you up to, or if you were just classified as one grade, and you just start stepping from there. Yeah. That's true, though, right? You, you do, yeah. But you step after you, you classified as a grade, yeah. right. based on your responsibilities and, and your actual job description. And then you go into, um, I mean, it, it, I, I'm not quite sure how you start at what, what step. Start at step It depends one, on right? your qualifications when right. you come in. Right, right, because they may start someone who starts at, right. at, grade, at step three. 
I'm That's saying cool. with the federal government, we start in a grade and then we graduate grades, and then once you max out mm -hmm. your grade, then you start stepping. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not how it no, goes. That's not how that works. That's not how this one works. So I started at a five, and then I stepped it's just to a seven. Another nonsensical government five. step thing, actually. <coughs> but it's not based on merit at all. I presume that there's well, more building going on now than, criteria. say, a couple of years ago. I would say so. Um, and more. therefore, I think that we, with more building going on, we've got to be bringing in more money for permits and stuff. And so I think, you know, and, and I'm actually amazed that he has to be extremely efficient and probably is putting in a little more than 16 hours a week that he says he's doing if he's managing to do all the, and you know, we know how much he's doing. So I think that he probably definitely does need to have a step increase and in it because for one thing, we should be able to afford it because we're bringing in more money. 16 did seem more low for the building inspector, 16 hours a week. Well, Matt will be yeah, the decision usually, maker. Yeah, I guess he'll be the decision maker on that. Usually, he voluntarily went down to sixteen. Right. Um, How much do you think uh, gets passed off week to week, on an average, that you can get to? Um, well, of course, it weeks vary. Right. <laughs> this last week, uh, I actually had a doctor's appointment, so I missed my day in Friday, but um, making up for it this week because I have a, a appointment up at Stowe with the fire chief on, uh, tomorrow. Um, and there's some other issues going on in town. <laughs> really? <laughs> so they, I can't imagine. <laughs> it all kind of evens out sooner or later, but I, I would, I'm comfortable at the 16 hours. I was just wondering um, if there was a delay, perhaps, in, in the inspections taking place or, or things getting moving because the hours are, because you need more hours in a week to do the job if things are, you know, taking longer to do for the general public then. Uh, I think I'm keeping up with the inspections fine. The other um, aspects are the time-consuming ones. Okay. Well, we finally finished number one. We did finish <laughs> number one. We beat that one pretty good. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go to number two, the stipend, Larry. Um, those are, um, remain the same, right? They had increased the plumbing <coughs> electrical, uh, or increased last year. So uh, I think they should stay the same. And those inspectors are paid per inspection? They are no. in the stipend. Okay. Stipend for the year, for the year. depending on how many? On a, month, on a monthly basis. Regardless of workload. Regardless of workload. Okay, great. Number three, repairs, maintenance. Um, this was kind of a mystery item in my budget. And um, it was a fee uh, for the uh, GIS service, which I don't use, per se. So I thought we should, you know, eliminate it or decrease it. <laughs> yeah, we already decided this, so maybe I didn't update the spreadsheet right away after that I left. But there's a, a fee here for, as he said, a GIS license that is not used. So his recommendation in his memo is to take this line item to $100, which is just a cushion in case something breaks. So we can replace a question mark C Matt with $100. $100. What is the now GIS license? For $100. Uh, as the, I understand it, yeah. it's um, the. Charge by periods and semicolons. <laughs> um, it's the assessor's page, um, and you can mm -hmm. go on it and oh, okay. find the different yeah, properties, yeah, yeah. which I use often, yeah. but I don't go on there to add anything. Oh, okay. And I think that's what the oh, license okay. oh, does. Oh, so that was so you can get in and change something. Okay, I see. 
Is that is that page being um, adequately updated? Anyone know? Yes. Yeah, I it think is. it is. Okay. Yeah, community development. This is their bailiwick. Okay. Yeah. The extra license. You know, in, in some jurisdictions where there's a lot of activity, the zoning official would want mm -hmm. read write access to add zoning information or take it away as things are changed. Right. But we don't need that functionality. We really okay. don't. So we're gonna just do it with it. Now there's a conservation update that as well. Because it ha does have a lot of really good stuff, but I don't know if the wetlands are as accurate as the no. conservation probably has. I think that if I'm hoping that if they have a case where somebody's actually going out there and flagging wetlands, mm -hmm. that they're updating the GIS with okay. that information, I would hope. Okay. And it's not unusual for the Commonwealth to do an update, and we would import that into our database. Uh, Bill will be stopping by a little bit later. If you want to table that question, you can ask him that. I'm sure he'll know the answer. Okay, anything else on repairs and maintenance? Okay, training and conferences. Um, so what was that? Number four? Yes, I um, recommend that to stay the same. Stay the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, let's move to number five. Looks like number five is staying the same as well. Anything yeah. you want to add there, Larry? No. Okay. Number six, other supplies. Um, so this was a area where code books come out in a three-year cycle, and so we have a peak and then a yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, that's kind of how we handled it um, so we assume the books come out every year and then those funds go into yeah. free cash if the book so this sounds like this, this, this is you working with Gene and figuring out where the where where the books are coming from what account it's going to be right I think what they did is they they, they weren't going to have the book for 19 and 20 they went back in the budget in 21 okay, okay. so we are adjusting budget every year okay <coughs> Uh, state travel looks like it fluctuates depending on the amount of inspections and the mileage reimbursement. Um, and that's for all three inspectors. inspectors yeah. The wiring electrical. Oh. The wiring electrical one. Um, <laughs> wiring, plumbing, gas, and building. Okay. Um, so. Like, um, go ahead. I'm also the inspector in Uxbridge, mm -hmm. and they pay for uh, my association with the Metro West Building Officials Association and um, some other classes that I take. So, to speak softly. Moving <laughs> on. Moving mm -hmm. on. Number 10. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> Um, the um, um, plumbing, yep, and um, electrical inspectors also um, go to classes okay. and are required to uh, keep up their um, educational credits. Um, one of these things, though, was. Uh, a license for the what was that for the electrical inspector? I think, I think it's wiring and plumbing. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, are you at the next CMAT? Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> we also agreed on this one. The town has been paying for uh, licenses for our electrical inspector and plumbing inspector. Those licenses are valid for their practice of their profession. Uh, I don't support that policy. No. So we're going to stop that. I think if somebody gives us 45, 50 hours a week of their time and they do not have any other opportunity yeah. for employment and they 
need that to be here and be an employee. Yeah. It's a different kind of conversation right. than paying for a tradesperson. Yeah, well, so I don't think it's appropriate. So we do that. Okay, fair enough. That's not what I'm going to Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You're right. I don't know whether I knew that happened. I just had one quick question on the actual spreadsheet. What is the physicals? I think that was a one-time deal when I was hired. Um, what is it? Medical that physical, is right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, physical. physical. <laughs> <laughs> good, good thing they didn't give me an eye test. <laughs> Building this vector, we can't make it up before this day. It may not have the same impact as what we can. Right. Okay. Looks like number 10 is office supplies, where we have nothing in the budget, so that's an easy one. Does anyone, does anyone want to review the budget line by line, or I think we covered it pretty good? Well, we kind of did through the memo, but um, okay. Does anyone have any further questions about the budget or anything uh, else? I just want to okay. think there is money in the office supply budget. There isn't money in additional equipment for FY19. So the office supply budget has $775 in it for FY19. Okay. Right. I, I, I was referring to 54200 there at the bottom. But. I know someone listened to a podcast, so I want to make sure that's accurate. Yes. I, one of my thoughts was... It would be great if we could put these budgets on the thing too, so people could follow along. And I thought, well, I'm probably going to have to figure out how to do that, so <laughs> I pushed that to the back. All right, moving on, moving on. Any other questions for Larry? Go once, twice. So, thank you very much, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Larry. Thank you, Larry. Who's that bearded gentleman there? Yeah. Santa. <laughs> Next <Not> is. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't looked. <laughs> Next is a reserve fund transfer. Come on up, Bill. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Before um, we get, I'm sorry. Before we get into this, do you want to ask a GIS question? Conservation. Conservation. Oh, oh yeah. I lost it. <laughs> He's already his own Wait a minute, it'll come to you. Wetlands information, is it updated regularly in our GIS? GIS uh, information that shows wetlands is just a planning tool. It's not okay. something you should really rely on. Um, it's state-based uh, or when they do the aerial mapping, what's easily identifiable from okay. 10,000 feet in the air as wetlands. But there's a conservation dimension is involved in, in keeping the actual maps or? The, they do it on a site-by-site -site basis and they have files and any wetland line is only good for three years per the regulations um, so it would have to be updated anyway in three years. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to the rever uh, reserve fund transfer. Um, for two new, my request is $264. Want to give us a brief description, Bill? Yeah, sure. Um, the planning board, when they do their budgeting, they have been maintaining a level funded budget. Um, and every year, the CMRPC uh, membership fee goes up by, I want to say, about 15% every year. Um, that combined with the fact that we don't typically have a number of public hearings that we pay for, for example, for zoning bylaw changes. Um, we have to advertise when we have a public hearing for a zoning bylaw change. That's the cost we're talking about. Okay. So this particular year we had one tonight uh, for the annual town meeting um, for two minor changes that we had to advertise which put us into this bracket. Um, in fact, the board even discussed tonight as part of this discussion on the reserve fund transfer that instead of going with the Worcester Telegram, we're going to start exploring going with the local paper so it's not as costly. Tribune. Yeah. I assume it's a state law. We have to actually put in a paper as a... In a paper of general circulation, yes. More people get the Tribune now probably. Right. 
Don't right. want soccer call, it'll reach five people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bill is looking for two hundred and sixty-four dollars for this um, expense. Right? The planning board is looking for two hundred and sixty-four dollars. Yes. Right. Paul. Motion to approve the transfer. Second. All right. Any further questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Great. Thank you, Bill. Thank, Thank you. Bill. you were Good to see everyone. Thanks, Bill. Nice <laughs> I know. Get you out of here soon, right? You have them? I have them. Oh. Order. Um, moving on. We skipped. Um, second thing on the agenda discussion. Revenues. Revenues for the fiscal 2019 budget. <laughs> Do we intend to skip it until the next meeting? Is that what that look needs? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to have you um, look at your budget books, and I'm going to be collecting them at the end of the night because we'll be continuing to add things in there. Mm -hmm. So if you go under the re revenue tab, I don't know if you want to take the link. No. No. Okay. It used to be the one. Good memory. I think we talked a little bit about this last week, last meeting. Did you remember that correctly? A little bit, I believe, yes. We talked about the governor's budget. Good. Okay. You know when you're ready, Ryan? Go ahead. You sure? Yep. Thank you. Um, most of you are familiar with the spreadsheet. It hasn't changed this year. So we have the, um, the available increase in 2.5% new growth at 332,207 and new growth at 80,000. So that's a change in revenue from FY18 to FY19 of $412,207. The that's an increase. The debt exclusions, those are a direct result of what is budgeted for debt that is debt excluded. So those numbers come directly from the expenditure reports for those particular debt projects. Um, estimated local receipts we budgeted at one million four hundred fourteen thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars. That is an basically an increase of two percent over last year's, as well as the meals tax it has been included. That's why you're going to see a difference between FY17 and F FY18. Um, we left it at twenty thousand from eighteen to nineteen under that category because I have not heard from the Department of Revenue um, that number has to be approved by them so i want to get that number that we can use Millions. for the fy19 budget from them <coughs> um i left it at the twenty thousand so that category That's increased by twenty nine thousand six hundred two dollars um reserve from debt bond premium when we went out for the the debt um, we received a bond premium that we have to amortize over the length of the bond um, so that actually reduces the amount that we have to kind of charge the taxpayers, so that's $39,413. Blackstone Valley Debt Exclusion, that's for their project, um, that's $44,995. I just jumped up because I skipped that category. Uh, state Aid we reviewed last week, there's a net change of a negative $12,400. So the subtotal of available revenue over FY18 is $429,409. That's as, remember these are fluid and we will be revisiting any category um, like if meals tax were to go up that you know these numbers may change slightly I don't anticipate significant changes but um, under other available funds there we have not had this conversation with the conservation so committee that 10,000 has been removed for FY19 um, we're anticipating receipts reserved for appropriation as a transfer of 320000 for the ambulance. The post office rent, I still, it, it is a miscellaneous revenue. It does come in as part of estimated receipts. I do put that separately because that is coming from the lease. Um, there are some requirements that we do maintenance in the building. That's why it's not lumped up with everything else. I leave that at the $48,810. Eight, $48, and there has been no conversation, I believe, with the Board of Selectmen as to whether or not free cash will be um, used at 600000 I brought that back to five hundred after a conversation with Matt. From the post office, didn't the rent go up? Did that happen in, for the that, first that year? That is the increase. Oh, okay, so fiscal 17 was the first year that happened. 
Okay. This is strictly the revenue piece. We're still working on the expenditure piece, so it's kind of like you're seeing things in a little bit of vacuum. Um, like I said, we have some holes in it. You know, the conversation of free cash hasn't happened yet. That's, that's an estimate. The wetlands, like I said, conservation hasn't been approached yet, and we may have some movement under the uh, meals tax. And 80000 is used as an estimate for new growth. Um, as you're aware, we have new growth certified in October. We tend to look at the spring town meeting and the fall town meeting for the operating budget of the following fiscal year. So that hasn't changed as well as the fact that we probably won't have state numbers until July. So we're using House 1 right now. The following sheet, oh, go ahead. Can I ask? Sure. Um, there's something that has been gnawing at me in last year, maybe the year before, and now again this year. I thought that the state said that the town could receive a certain amount per person going to Wallen Lake State Park. Has that ever been uh, added up and tallied and figured out how we're going to be receiving that to help out our public safety people? So we closed the year. I'm, the exact number is going to escape me. I, I, the, I don't. So the okay. fee has been collected. Okay. Um, no money has been spent. Okay. And I believe we're over thirty thousand dollars in accrued mm -hmm. fees over the course of almost two years. Because uh, I think it was instituted not quite at the beginning right. of the first year it was in. And now we've mm -hmm. had one full year of Plus. experience. Um, there's been some conversation <coughs> we had. Uh, DCR was before the Board of Selectmen to discuss potential use of those funds. They do have to sign off. Um, was that in the loose, initial bill? It's a loose agreement. It's in the statute. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, the restriction on the fund is for public safety needs mm -hmm. and for the needs of the forest and the way mm -hmm. the town interacts with so that's, and there have been proposals floated. We haven't nailed down what we want to do if we want to do anything this year. So DCR's recommendation was sit on it for a little while longer and let it get a little bigger so you can maybe do a bigger project. <coughs> um, from the public safety point of view, there are relatively affordable things we could do um, that would improve our ability to cover the forest in terms of know a small radio system or um, there was some discussion of drone technology and it's uh, we have a number of incidents we have a fair fairly number decent number of incidents ongoing being lost right and, and, and they're children. ongoing with all yeah. that you know it's not as though okay so let's figure out well you know public safety well maybe a big project you know the costs are ongoing right so the expense you know and the you know, filling filling those gaps should be on. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, and I think there's <coughs> there's interest in that direction too. Hmm. And we were exploring whether or not the way the fund was crafted would allow us to supplement <coughs> our compensation lines in the police department. Or and it, I don't think there was any opposition raised that night um, by DCR to that. Yeah, I don't know. Take the opportunity to bend uh, McKenna and Batman's ear when they were here. Well, I think a lot of what's occurred has been thanks to them. Yeah. <coughs> so, you know, they've done pretty much anything we've asked them to do with respect to this. But <coughs> this is an unusual arrangement. We're glad to have it. Gee, I'm curious on when the revenues come in. Where where do the revenues come in like from? Building permits. That comes under local receipts. Local receipts. Okay, so. So halfway in be on the first page, that's in the local receipts includes meal tax. That's part of that one million four hundred fourteen thousand. Now, if you if you want to look at local, local receipts, mm -hmm. if you look further in under the revenue tab, mm -hmm. yep, you're going to find a sheet that's folded. It looks oh, like okay. this. Yep. And that provides a trend history. Um, and that is by category, so motor vehicle is really our largest local receipt. Yep. That's a million thirty-one thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars estimated for FY19. Okay. The building permits would fall under licenses and permits. 
Um, okay. And like I said, you can yep. okay. see the trends there. Now, what about uh, like when they, people go to the planning board and they have to give money to the planning board to get things done and stuff? Where, do, where does that come in? Are you talking under the 53 and a half and the 53 Gs? Yeah, but I mean, I know sometimes they put they put up uh, uh, bonds and stuff like that, and it's used. But so, some of the money, uh, you know, they you have to give them so much to go before them. Uh, I think that's all set aside in escrow, based yeah. on the uh, uh, um, based on the project, Carol. It's, right. it's kept separately. Right. By, right. Those you know. will be your sureties. I think yeah. what Carol's well, asking yeah, is there are fees. There for are fees filing. for filing. That's oh, the ones I'm looking for. Island fees. That w there's under fees would be any fees the yeah. town collects that becomes part of the general fund revenue. Okay. okay. We also collect review fees or <laughs> consulting fees, which right. is the 53. Right. And right. And, and that, that gets paid fees. out. Right. Those are set set up in a different part of the town right. accounts as special revenue, and that's right. used for that project. Only. Right. Right. But any fees that the town retains right. um, would that, go into the. That's account. over there. Okay. Yeah. Now, when they go, but not any fees that they pay to file with the conservation, right? Conservation also has a departmental, but they don't ask over there. Is only only if they decide to be nice and give us some money. Well, no, they the only thing that's restricted from conservation yeah. is the wetland fees. Okay, so that goes into a a special revenue account, and that's the amount that they that's restricted is in its own account, and that's what's transferred. That was what's transferred last okay. year. That was ten thousand dollars. So. Uh, Part of the conservation yeah. is general fund money, okay. um, and actually, I'll update the budget books to include last year's. Mm -hmm. I'll put it underneath the departmental code, yep. um, so you can look at what was collected last oh, year for okay. next year. That'd meeting. be good. Yeah. This this sheet takes all of those things, but it puts it right. more in category based. So all the fees are together, um, all the licenses and permits are together, all the fines, right. and so this is more of a uh, global look at it. So we're like in, in fees. No, I'm, I don't know, do the, do, do the uh, police pick up fees? Like, I don't know, if you get a gun permit or something, do you go to the police department? Police, police yeah. have fees. Um, it's fire has, go in here. Has the fees. fire department, you want a burning permit? Yeah, okay. Dog yeah. licenses. Or dog licenses. Dog licenses. Some goes to the they, We do have Did you get those separately? separately? Some I do. goes to the state, right, for, like, gun permits. Yeah. I, I wrote one check, but part of it goes to the state, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No, to sell FinCom members carry guns. <laughs> All of us. I didn't, see a, I didn't see a metal detector. Probably the one you least expect. <laughs> I, I don't have one. You don't drink coffee. <laughs> really? What? I don't. I don't. Okay. Gene. Well, that was a happy Gene. picture, Gene. <laughs> uh, I know last year I thought on a uh, town meeting we voted to increase that meals tax by you know a quarter of a percent or so. What is that going to? It actually went into FY19, FY18, FY18. We were allowed to budget twenty thousand dollars for that. It's a local option. Started in July. The it, it didn't, it, we were allowed to budget for 10 months. Okay. Um, so we will have that for 20. Uh, I'm waiting for a number that we can use. I estimated at 20,000. Okay. Do we, that's the estimate of what a full fiscal year will no, generate? No, I'm waiting. That's one that has they have to approve. So I left it at the 20 until they tell me I can use a number different and then I will increase it. That'll be a positive. It should, it should be a little higher. Yeah. But that's what your estimate was for, let's say, 10 months. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because that has to be approved, I let them give me that number. Okay. Do we have an Do we have any actuals that say we are getting that much? Actual, what we're actually taking. Well, they in. come in quarterly. Yeah. So okay. I don't have a full year yet. No, but you do have a quarterly um, of what. Do you, have, do you have six months worth? Do you know what the? No, because I, I did receive one payment, but I don't. Don't know if it was. I'd have to look. And the okay. payments come from the state? They do. They do. <laughs> they charge they us an assessment fee <laughs> for calculating. Printing. Yeah. 
the other sheets um, really are just back up in their charts, just so you can see the trending uh, chapter 70, unrestricted uh, federal government aid, which is used to be called lottery aid, state owned land, which is probably the most disappointing of these all, and then the school choice sending tuition um, budget. And we talked about that last week. And we wanted to make it clear that you do net them out, right? Well, Ryan, who will have all Yes, I was, look, I was looking for the other column here, Jean. Well, actually, I have another spreadsheet for you. You do not net them out, is what you were supposed to say, Ryan. That well, yeah, I was going to add that once I got the, the graph, I was going to add that in. <laughs> um, the last page that you have, well, I think it's your last page. You have the estimated local receipts, but you also have the history of free cash. Um, free cash was certified at one million five hundred eighty thousand six hundred thirty-four thousand. We did transfer out at the fall town meeting. Uh, we transferred to OPEB and for capital projects. Those are the bold items of sixty-six thousand eight forty-two and sixty-three thousand. Um, I did put as a placeholder. Um, Aren't you good? Some other items, <laughs> and I did review this with Matt before I did it. Uh, Five hundred thousand for next year's FY twenty nineteen budget. Two hundred eighty-two thousand. That was the amount of money that would bring us back up to our stabilization policy of five percent of the general operating revenues, and then two hundred thousand for snow and ice. Makes sense. Now those have not been discussed at any level other than ours. Um, so the Board of Selectmen hasn't, hasn't reviewed them. I don't know if Snow and Ice is going to be at 200000 Again, those are just placeholder numbers. I'm sorry, those numbers on the sheet and I can't find them? Or Behind that one. You? No. One more. Yeah. Oh, oh, there was two. <laughs> Surprise. Ah, at least I'm not going crazy. I'm saying, where are those numbers? Okay, thank you. <laughs> she said bold, and I'm like, there's no bold. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it. Okay. So, um, any other information on state-owned land, or it, it is what it is? Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I think it's a disappointing number. It doesn't really jive with our expectation. I don't know how much more land the state may have accrued over the year. When you read their formulas, it's, it's an allocation. Uh, it's acre very basis. weird. So it's a little bit odd that I got no indication from our assessor that the valuations changed in any way because this was supposed to be a valuation year. So, you know, it seems to be a little bit of a retreat from the commitment to, to at least level fund it. My hunch is that there were increases in other categories benefited from a transfer from the state's pilot fund. There are various uh, state-owned land categories. Sure. And they each have their own priority. And the formulas are all different. I spent a good part of a year looking at state-owned land for a while. It's very, it hasn't been updated in 18 years, 18 years, I want to say. Something ridiculous. I just, it's, um, and there are labels given to communities that put them in a different category. I mean, it's, it's, it's a mishmash of mess. Mm -hmm. so. I did place a call into Brett McKenna's office today, and yeah. I haven't heard back from them, but, um, I'll you talk to him story. about that? I am going to talk to him about <gasps> that. He'll never yes. hear back from him. Well. Did that number come out <laughs> after they were here? You mean after they were here when? When they came for the police and fire. Okay. For the board of no, selectmen meeting. This, the cherry sheet yeah. came out well before that. That was right about when uh, the MMA conference, so that would have been almost three weeks ago. January. The governor. Baker's a quick number. rundown of his budget. Yeah, I think uh, it was to be released the day after he gave his speech. Right. So. I think both of them understand the situation and mm -hmm. agree with our assessment. I know, I think it was Rep McKenna has even talked about getting a group of, of, of yeah, a group of communities who have this issue yeah. together to try to, I'm not sure where that is. Or. 
where that went. But I mean, we discuss it on the listserv on a regular basis. Uh, there are communities, obviously, out in Berkshire County and Hamden County and other places that have, have a similar concern. And they're somewhat more reliant upon that revenue. Um, so. I think what we, I, I'm not quite sure much, how they could be as more reliant than Douglas, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Well, they're smaller towns with bigger forests. It's a higher percentage is, of their I, income. I think that I give it about as much time as I have. Yeah. But, yeah. I, you know, we have lots of places where reducing the expenses of growing revenues might be more fruitful. Fruitful. Yeah, because you're not going to do much with this. See, what's re really frost you, though, is now they've dropped this down by $21,000. Just And then if you think about it, now they've got all that land up on the Webster line. We're losing probably $20,000 worth of taxes that we would have gotten for that land to begin with. I so just, basically, we're down, for, down by forty grand. Yeah, it just, there's no, no rhyme or reason to it, Carol. It's very sad. Very, very sad. And I will give you a copy. I did request that information from the uh, principal assessor regarding the land, uh, the 23.5 acres. Um, so I will give you a copy of that tonight. I just didn't copy it. Um, one parcel contains 23.5 acres with a value of 119700 The taxes in FY18 would have been $1,923.59. The second parcel contains 1.9 three acres with a value of 7200 the FY18 taxes would have been $115.70. These parcels have not been added to the state-owned land reimbursement for, for the town yet. Um, it, she goes on to further say, in FY16, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts purchased 342.75 acres from a taxpayer. They paid $1.5 million. Right. right. The town had a value of $1.868 million. Right. And while we're not getting the taxes from that. Right. That's that's if you were to calculate the taxes using Douglas's tax rate, right. the taxes would have been thirty thousand eight. Thirty thousand. I was so thought it was twenty. Yeah. So okay, so now we're down by fifty. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, what it is. If you think about it, that's what we're down by. We should have fought that tooth and nail not to let him have that. Oh well, it's gone now. Okay. Um sure this is an appropriate time to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, now that we kind of have the revenue picture and we're getting at least close to the expense picture, do we have a general sense of our revenues for fiscal 19 covering our expenses for fiscal 19? <coughs> yeah, six, six weeks in the budget season for us, for at least the finance committee to go. No, so there's work to do. I think the number changes quite a bit, so I don't like to share numbers that I can't What's fair? publish yet. I think we're going to have to reconcile department head requests uh, to the revenue picture. There are a couple of items that we still might explore, um, but it's a significant shortfall and will require um, some pretty significant recommendations from me and the board to bring it to balance. For fiscal 19. Okay. And our yeah. lack, oh, go ahead. Yeah, the, the basically, and, and I think I've already said this, but I, I keep coming back to it. Our health insurance uh, premiums are at a 5.9% increase, and that is confirmed. So the renewal has been issued and it awaits signature. That's a 5.9% of a very large number. Yep. Property and casualty quote is not in yet, but we've been told to think about a number around 319,000 which is a pretty decent increase from last year. It is a reflection of our 132% loss ratio over the last three years, because we've had some pretty significant claims. Uh, our health insurance loss ratio, by way of comparison, is 75%, which I think is outrageously low. And how that can translate into any kind of premium increase 
Mm. It's highway robbery, and it mm. reflects the way insurance rates are established in the Commonwealth. Um, so that's that's just too bad. The pension fund would be the second largest uh, account, and it's growing very rapidly, and unfortunately not rapidly enough to cover an actuarially recommended arc. Worcester County, you mean? Worcester yeah. County Retirement. Yeah. So it's 9.95 percent increase huh. year to year. So oh. those those accounts would drive almost all of the increase on the municipal side. They do reflect, of course, employment on both the schools and the bailiwick. And the next largest account after that would be personnel. The COLA that was used to estimate our expense budget is an av roughly an average of the last five years actuals. Um, but whether or not we can sustain it is a matter of um, some discussion. Uh, we're going back and forth with the school budget and their priorities, which have yet to be completely disclosed and rounded out. Uh, but they're experiencing volatility from transportation and from um, special needs education, which we know are always volatile. Some of it comes back to us through the circuit breaker and other programs, but you know, compared to pilot, for instance, if, if I could wave my magic wand and ask the governor and the General Assembly to fully fund just one mandate, it would be their own circuit breaker, because it would go a long way towards soothing the pain. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. It's a definitely well over six digit problem. And so the solutions will not be um, trying to get a 5% discount on a delivery of paper clips. It'd be much more broadly. When you say transportation, is that special ed transportation? Both pieces of the school contract. So school transportation the school, will be up a little over 7%. Is that because of a new contract, contract? contract? Three, three, three years ago? I think they're in the last year of the contract. I, we asked when it would be bid out, and it was, we were told next year. So they're in the last year of their contract. Um, there are some levers. That's about program uh, changes. Is it that's causing the uh, transportation changes? I don't, I didn't get that impression. Okay. Um, I mean, because sometimes those kind of things slip through and you go, oh, so you've decided that you're going to have these programs in the afternoon, you're going to bring the kids home. I mean, that all of that kind right. of stuff. And the number of times they're on the road every day. So we've been asking questions about that, and I would say that it would be well advised to prepare for that meeting when they come before you to ask those questions. I don't think any... I've asked, I don't think there's any reason for fuel or fuel inflator clauses to be relevant. Uh, about the only thing I've encountered with transportation contracts is that in the private sector there's significant pressure on workers' compensation insurance rates and they some, you know, these are not annual workers throwing trash in the back of the trash truck, but sometimes the entire industry sees a change. But trying to understand why it would go up by 7%, because that's pretty substantial. Mm, there's an article in the Telegram a couple months back about the lack of um, bus companies, the lack of bus companies bidding on contracts. So. Well, it's, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's a very important article for everyone to read. Uh, because we look to competitive bidding to be part of the solution mm -hmm. for you know, trying to keep some pressure on pricing. And it is typical for school districts to get only one bid. Wow. So you start to feel like you're a part of a territory system mm -hmm. uh, when that happens. It certainly happens with garbage hauling contracts. It seems to be happening with mm -hmm. bus contracts. Mm -hmm. They, uh, there's really not much of an economy of scale to be realized for them. So I don't recognize the value of giving them a territory. They're not a utility. They do have high fixed costs, but they're not 
once a bus is established for a district that's going to be in that district, it's not, you're not going to be able to share it across and do extra runs with it. So I don't see the point. Uh, special education transportation was up by a lot more. I want to say 38%. Wow. That is client driven because it's ties to the student. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the not so happy news. You even mentioned the extra 150 to 200 grand in BBT as well. Which is coming, right? We're going to be assessed an extra 150 for the extra students. I don't think that's the number. It's not the number. No? No. Aren't there 15 more students going? Well, yeah, but I don't think it's the number of the increase. Oh, that's good. No, it's going to be probably higher. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking a four-letter word that begins with A and ends with lot. <laughs> a lot higher than one. Isn't it 10000 a kid? No, is my... Is my well, it no. depends on where their budget is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Additional assessments also for giving, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that, that number historically has not been right, a lot. Right, but it depends on what their... When is their budget meeting? I think the note indicated within the next week or two. Yeah. So our so. number isn't final. Again, it's hard to use numbers right. that they haven't finalized yeah, and they're older to it. No, I understand. But I, I don't think 150 is even close to being. But, uh, you know, uh, it is a public budget meeting. It is. You wanted to attend. We had done a back of the envelope estimate when we first saw the student population change, and we were pretty close. So the other piece of information that you asked from last week, which, Howard, can we net school choice in and school choice out? No. <laughs> absolutely not. Ooh. Can you please tell Eric that, please? <laughs> <laughs> Eric thought he was being funny tonight. By you give me an yourself. estimate, though, on school choice mo money in and out? We are going to provide uh, you. That was, you never give us. No, I don't. But we are going to provide you, and this is from Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, <laughs> so the first sheet was provided. I made the chart for the second sheet because the second sheet was really what you would ask for is you wanted to see the bar graph for the money, I thought. So the first sheet is um, list by year, the FT per pupils as well in receiving and sending. And then the first chart is for the pupils themselves. The second chart is for the dollars associated with those pupils. So I believe that's what you requested. So receiving tuition spike in 2017? Is that what the no, second chart is saying? No, it didn't really spike. It went from what, 65 to 78? 78? Six, six. Well, increase. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah, at the back, the back chart. Yeah, 150,000. Yeah. Hey, until you work for the IRS, it's 130, hmm. not 150. <laughs> looking at the bar graph. Oh, you look at the bar graph? So the numbers are right there on the left. <laughs> so if I if I look at these Big numbers spike. and just take sure 17, and, and bear with me, we're in 017. Well, so I I guess. I do have a question. I see 123.3. We brought in 123 and a third kids. Who's that one third kid? Part of you. These, are, yeah. It's Got it. Yeah. Fair yes. enough. Good answer. <laughs> Just the legs came in. Um, so what? So, I mean, are we netting? You know, you 70, 71.9 kids for 017. Yeah, to our favor. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to Matt's point of, um, you know, where you start to try to raise revenues or lower expenses on a macro level, we've talked about this a little bit. Are we a seller? Can we promote being a seller of school services more than we do? Well, funny you should say that. Fun. <laughs> uh -huh. Part of the afternoon 
yep. uh, conspiring nefariously to uh, words that make me nervous. Uh, I love them. To <laughs> at least I'm safe. To you, my terminology, nobody else's. I'll take ownership of the words. Stop playing defense. Yeah. Yep. Start playing Our offense. Yep. And think of competitive business strategy and positioning and branding mm -hmm. as tools in your quiver yep. to begin to win the competition and identify the competition's weak spots mm -hmm. and exploit them. Not just BVT, but but across Anybody. the board. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. We talked a year or two about shutting down schools. I mean, what school of choice are you going to compete? Let's, right. let's go. We've got extra schools. We have all the schools. We, you know, let's go. Right? We <laughs> sure. We I would do. phrase we it that way. But yeah. That's sale. not true. We've we got plenty of room. Come on down. We capacity. Fire. You guys should fill in to the uh, old grandma's Perfect. Yeah. 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 Oh, the the there's there. plenty of room in that. Okay. I don't like to make light. I don't like to think of schools as ice cream shops. Think about it. If you're going to market the ice cream stand, you're going to tell people we want to offer yeah, more flavors than we've ever right. seen before yeah, this sure, is an experience sure. or do you want to say I'm sorry this year we can't do vanilla mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. this year we can't do chocolate anymore is it any surprise that your ice cream stand loses customers APs, APs, APs. everybody looks at APs a more certain APs, cohort of yeah. students yeah. will make a decision based upon opportunities for advanced placement and honors level yeah. courses and we did tell them that you would be very happy you, Yay. you yeah. in particular. And I would. Yeah. But it's obviously in flux. I, I think there's a little bit of a richness. I know we don't want to net them out. But if we just look at one trend line, so a receiving line, mm -hmm. if you take some of the noise out of the numbers, <coughs> my eyesight sees a step function to be stepping up and probably the difference between 2029 and 20, uh, 2011 and then you step again mm -hmm. to 2014 mm -hmm. you are <coughs> going up and so I asked a question today and we have to wait for the answer can we get more granular with this data where are the students coming from mm -hmm. yeah. and uh Speaking specifically to that group as a focus group, what motivated them to choose Douglas instead of yeah, Elmish? Sure, sure. That's right, going right. to be a pretty important conversation. Right. I mean, looking at the, the, those two steps, I mean, I think one of the answers is a first step increases when we announced we were building a new school, and the second step increases when it opened. Right. I, I have no idea on the 2017 increase. I remember shocks me to be well, honest. Um, <coughs> Provide a product to people who come. Yeah, well, but you know, like the way it's been presented, I I was assuming that number was decreasing. But we're not, we're not alone in the world either. And so right. you have to look at what's going on in other communities. And, and so that would provide a loss that would might, might provide a loss to them, which in fact would, 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 would bring here, mm. bring to Douglas without really a reason other than they wanted to leave. Yeah. It's a negative reason from the other community, so. Right. And the only cautionary tale is you do have to add to 2016 and 2017 the rather significant increase in out-migration to BBT. Mm -hmm. yep. So to see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, I know. Okay, I that's, it. that's a different equation, to yeah. be honest, right? Yes, you know. very and common. They're, they're a niche player that's eating everybody's lunch. Yeah, yeah or a specific right, group right, of right, right, yep. Were we going but to again, get I asked some? for the uh, uh, placements the last couple of times, and that's your that's your actual return on investment. You yeah. asked for them for the March 14th meeting, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Fair enough. yeah. No. right. I think we were going to place that request in for both schools. For both schools. Yeah. We're trying to get them both on the 14th. And can we start to see maybe AP numbers? You know, number of AP courses that Douglas I is currently offering. The sense the superintendent has that already prepared or is very close okay. to because there's a talk he's given recently where he had a lot of that. Do we get <coughs> that number from BBT? Do they have one? A few AP courses? I think they have to tell you, and yes, I think that number was part of the superintendent's presentation. Yeah. We get that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, speaking of weaknesses, I don't like, we shouldn't put things out there, but. It's no secret. They 
their classroom education is different. They're splitting their time with their trades courses. So you're trying to get students to pass an AP class on 90 days of classroom instruction as opposed to 180. I think it is a secret. Yeah. But it's a secret we ought to publicize. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Your chance, yes. It, yes. The course really only matters if you get the college credit and you're going to save money and time in college or increase your opportunities for electives, whatever it is that motivates you. And if your chances are much better at passing in Douglas than they are anywhere else. The results, you can have a number of AP courses offered. And can't we quantify AP results? I believe AP results are, without naming kids, you can tell who's getting fives and fours and yeah. threes and twos. The high school, it's part of the high school's AP presentation every I would year. Love I don't know about to see those numbers. It may be helpful just so they're prepared when they come before this committee uh, a list of topics that you would like to take. Okay. You know, you don't want to ask them when they're here because, right. like okay. me, they're not going to state a number. Yeah, okay. Uh, so if you have anything specific, you know, just. Let me see if I can get an email by the end of the week. Maybe we go through the chair and topics. by next meeting. Yeah, why don't we bring them to the next meeting and we'll put them together for if that works for everybody. Well, you're, you, you're not coming the next I'll meeting, but you shoot them yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay. So it won't have the same emphasis and the same passion. Power <laughs> behind them. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions? Discussion points, revenues. Thank you very much, Gene, for putting all that together. Um, we did the reserve fund transfers. I gave you back the expenditure voucher, Gene. Do you want we to? We did have a payroll voucher for forty two dollars and twenty seven cents. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes. I, to be honest, did not get a chance to read them, so I'm just going to take a couple minutes to read through them. If you want to do that, that'd be great. Hey, man. Have you even uh, poke uh, selection process talking about the potential school, the grammar school turning into a police station? Have I done what? You even, like, looked at it at all since then. I wasn't sure really where, where it was left. That poor we went right. back and pulled a feasibility report for the rehab of that building that, first of all, is dated, and second of all, the building code requirements for a school are very different. Um, so I think this, we would have to do another feasibility, and I'm going to ask the board if they want to put it in their budget as a project because that, that kind of investigation would probably require phase one, phase two environmental and identification of all the issues in the building. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Some of the report that was done is kind of more, it's an orientation, but standards have changed. The building has aged, although it has aged in my opinion, gracefully, I walked through it. Um, you know, obviously needs a lot of work, but the damage that was occurring because of a bad roof cell totally stopped, and there's no leaks at all. So what what's there is there, and it's steep. And then, you know, Gene, in the binders, I know police was in there, but fire was in there. Yeah. Has been you're you're going to leave these here for now. No, I, I know. Yeah, I and we're going to be updating them. I think those are the ones you printed out that we were able to add. Yeah, so really, one rate limiting step right now is me just okay. being able to print things out. Um, I'd like to have a one more budget meeting with fire chief before I put these packets together. It's all going to come together very quickly because it's all been worked on simultaneously, so it's all just going to drop on in. Do we have a schedule for them? What are we supposed to do with this? Well, I have the police penciled in for the next meeting, but it would require your approval. I might disappoint you on that only because I 
feel good about the offer we're about to make this union. If they agree to it, I'd like to just put it in the budget. And that would make it more final rather than conducting this weird semi negotiation okay. with them via the FinCom meeting transcript. Okay. <laughs> and you really can't bargain in bad no, faith. Exactly. No. Yeah. No um, we could we could present the you know, Matt's budgets next time. But the selectman's budget town council. Yeah. You know, we have Insurance. I can look at the site. Funny. Yeah. yeah. If, if the public safety isn't ready. And the 14th, we're trying to have the school departments, which is a pretty full meeting if we have both schools. Um, I think once I meet with Chief Vincent, I can do fire at the next meeting. We can do that. There are fewer moving parts. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for them to invite me to the table. It's not my job, it's their job. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd be looking for a motion to approve the finance committee meeting minutes for January twenty third. Unless anyone has any changes. Motion approved. Seconded. Motion made by Howard, seconded by Eric. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. I was going to Just so that you know, you can vote on, on it, even if you weren't here. Yeah, but I didn't watch That's it. That's why I voted. <laughs> yeah. Carol's been iTunes -y. using iTunes. <laughs> no, <watch> the meetings. <laughs> iTunes. Don't or even watch go the there. You don't want to hear me cursing when I try to buy, buy one of those songs. <laughs> <laughs> you know your Apple ID, Carol. I, I tell, so what do you want to do? I want to buy a song. <laughs> Um, nobody has any yet, so I'd be looking for the same motion for the January 30th meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. By Eric. Second it. Seconded by Cynthia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Also unanimous. Okay. Um, anybody have any old business? Yes. So we had talked about a BBT legal opinion. Will we have anything like that before the 14th? You or is that a little quick? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I just, I've been, as I think I mentioned, I've been keeping my right, very busy. Okay. Thank um, you. But it's on, he's had this for a while, so. Okay. So we are actually okay. looking for that. Okay. Great. We make any kind of decisions on the green community grant? What we, are we going for the lights? Yeah, so we've got to wrap that up by February 23rd and kind of okay. put in the, the follow up or final application. The money's been awarded to the town. Yep. Now we need approval for the project. Um, we have two alternative methods of buying the street lights and retrofitting them with LEDs. Both the grant would cover either option. It's really kind of an option of who to go with, who to work with. <clears throat> it's looking increasingly like um, we might be working through the MAPSI program, so that's the Massachusetts Area Planning Council, whatever they call it themselves. Um, they pick up a third, the town would typically pick up a third, and then there would be the use of the grant for the third. But we, the town's piece can be the, a piece of the grant. So we were thinking that two thirds of it would be funded by the grant. Um, there will be some, there are different pieces to that. There's the final conclusion of the conversation with National Grid. It is our intention to buy the lights. And so they put through their transaction approval process. That can grind away behind the scenes while we do the other two. One is an audit, so they have provided us with the purchase price for the lights of one dollar. So, in the back of my mind, I actually kind of question the value of the audit, except that we need to know what we're placing where so that we can get final pricing on the purchase of the LEDs. So the audit has to take place. <coughs> the audit has to be done, so we might be asking you for those funds from the reserve fund. It's going to be. 
eight to nine thousand dollar range to get the audit done in time. The last non-installation piece is design. <coughs> After the audit is completed, the design consultant will review the needs of different intersections based on traffic counts and you know visual observation and size the LED uh, fixture accordingly. That then turns into your PO, your purchase order, and uh, the parameters of the service contract that will, will follow on. So we are on schedule to have that done and before decision makers. I put streetlights on the Board of Selectmen's uh, agenda for a week from tonight to approve the letter to the grid to start the process. So that transaction. So has a decision been made that's what we're going to use the grant for? Or, I mean, there, are we looking at other yeah, options? Yeah, because the other projects are not shovel ready. Okay. Their payback terms are distant in the future. And I'd much rather just see us save the money now. Okay. I think I kind of cleared up in my own mind how, even with this very bizarre solar net metering agreement, it is still to the town's advantage direct operational advantage to switch to LEDs and lower its usage. Okay. Plus they give out more light. I think. They're, they're, I love this term, lumens, right? You yeah, get a right. lot more lumens for a lot less wattage. Yeah. Well, we, we changed them down in our building and wow, it's yeah. pretty good. You can see pretty good now. I like this. It's color. <laughs> you can see. I realize that the sodium lights don't reflect the full band of color. It's, it's not even that. They're brighter. Yeah. You know? It's a cleaner light. Remember when they first came out, everybody was hoarding their old ones? But these, they've come a long way. They're pretty good. Oh. Um, another thing, at one point you mentioned a spreadsheet we, we could get and play with. Is that near completion for us? It is. So that's what we're polishing up, Gene and I, this week. Okay. We kind of recognize the necessity of building in the roster and the FD count. It's kind of a necessary part of this. Uh, because there's noise around the number of hours in a year when there's a leap year and all this other nonsense. And to make this possible for us to be flexible around that without uh, being too vague about range. Just calculate a number. So I, I'm, I've come confident that we've done this week. Right, Gene? He's confident. <laughs> <laughs> he's right. He's confident. He is confident. Okay. Um, I should have it back to him tomorrow for him to do, to look at it again and um, fair enough. We it's speak different languages. They're very <laughs> similar. It's kind of like Polish and Russian. <laughs> she codes in accounting ease. Right. I code in old-fashioned coding. Let's logic. put it this way: I'm, I'm so learning so things I didn't know before, which I'm very excited about that. A plus. Yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> oh, that's good. Excellent. I feel like my Excel is deficient now. Deficient? Sufficient. No. Oh, deficient. Deficient. I think you. I make a motion to adjourn. Can we just hold on for one more second? <laughs> well, I made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I think you don't have the authority not to accept the motion. Second. Too late. Too late. The next meeting on the 27th. So Howard's not going to be here, and Lee's not going to be here. That leaves us with six. I haven't talked to Mike. You're not sure. So does everyone else think they will Hello. be here? You're here. <coughs> Carol? Eric's government. I'm planning on being here. Okay. My agent can't plan on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> My agent can't plan on a lot of things. So do we not think, so is math going to be the only budget that's going to be presented on the 27th? <laughs> I mean, I want to give that. <laughs> you know, if you don't mind, you should probably clean up the boards and commissions. Okay. Too, so yes. Okay. Did you know? No, I think those were all done, yeah. don't they? Yeah. I don't feel like we talked about very much. Then. But yeah. there's somebody. Water? Well, water and sewer? Water, yeah, water sewer is the one we don't well, want to forget about. Well, you mentioned the fire. <laughs> the yeah. fire. The fire could be ready, but then there's your department. 
There's, there is by department. Okay. Um, we have to have the tax department in too. And uh, it depends how detail you, you got. Okay. Oh, the assessors, we would come as a financial team. Right. Okay. okay. All right, so why don't we plan for those? Uh, I would say let's save the fire. I don't want the chief to, I'm apprehensive about planning too much and not having a quorum. Um, You'd rather cancel on me? No, well, <laughs> be bluntly honest, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, or we can, or, or you know, I'm, I don't have a great sense that you, when the previous minute, yeah, the previous previous administrator was a long presentation. I don't remember you being a long presentation. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's aim for the 27th, and I'll try to send a reminder out on the 20th and get a better picture of what we got. I'm supposed okay. to ask for out. I'll ask for in and out. We'll around. look at the financial departments yep. and all departments that fall under that. Yes. What's the meeting after that uh, for different? Dates. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the 13th. It's the second Tuesday of March. It, it is Tuesday the 13th. Yes. yes. Okay. I may have said the 14th today yep. because I'm forgetting what today is. And that's going to be the 27th. Oh, yeah, be the 13th. The yeah. Okay. And then the 27th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Matching. So the 27th, yeah. we'll tentatively plan to have the police and fire at that point. Then March 27th. Or March 27th, yes. March 27th. Very well, and then well. I haven't heard from Suzanne necessarily, but I think we'd have the public hearing the next week would be my guess. I can ask her when, what her time frame is. But. We'll, we'll get you the date. Okay, thank you. And capital, we have a schedule for capital improvement committee. Two meetings in February and a, lot, and a final meeting in March. First week of March. Maybe they can present on the 27th as well, since the chief will be here anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else? All right. Howard has made a motion to adjourn, and Pam has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, folks.